meekness and servanthood. This is the law of the kingdom of heaven. And this is the kingdom that you're a part of today. Eternity begins the day you're born, not the day you die. It starts on the inside of you and it will break out in the age to come. And all that working of love that's going on on the inside of you is going to be expressed in eternal reward. You know, the gold and the garments that we get in the age to come and the different positions. You know, heaven's a real place and it's coming to earth. You're going to have a real body. You're going to have a real job description. You're going to think. You're going to feel. You're not going to float around on a cloud playing a harp for a billions of billions of billions of billions of billions of years. I like harps, but you're not going to do that. Heaven is coming to earth. And in that day, when you stand before him, which is going to be in just a second, all that fire that's been going on on the inside of you, all that restraint that the Lord calls meekness. You know what meekness is? It's, it's restraining your own strength. It's restraining. Instead of, going, instead of responding when you're accused, you restrain it. You put your hand over your mouth. And you say, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to bless you. All that fire that comes burning on the inside, whenever you want to exalt yourself, and the Lord says, go low, be humble, and you're like, be humble, but I could do that so much better. And the Lord says, be humble and go low. He calls that love, and it's stoking a fire on the inside of you because you're just burning on the inside, and the Lord calls it love. Every time the impulse of your flesh wants to go to the lust of this life, all manner of lust, and you say, no, and your whole being is like, oh! And that fire is going on on the inside and you're going, no, I love God more. I love God more. God calls that love and it's stoking a fire on the inside of you. You can't see that fire right now. Your neighbors can't see that fire a little bit, a little bit through lives of righteousness. You can see it a little bit. You know who sees it? God sees it. And on that day, when you stand in front of him, you're going to be turned right side out. You know, the kingdom of heaven is inside out, upside down right now. But he's going to take it all and turn it right side up. He's going to turn you wrong side out. And all that fire that you've been stoking, all those flames, every time you say no, every time you say yes to righteousness, every time you take the reins of your imagination and the preoccupation of your soul and you say, no, I'm going to think about God. No, I'm going to pull my mind back to God. Every time you do that, the Lord stokes that fire and it's remembered. Did you know that? It's remembered and it's valued of great, great, it's precious to God. It's precious to God. It's what he's looking for. You know why it's what he's looking for? Because it's how he is. When Jesus walked on the earth, he was the meekest, most humble man. He lived in perfect restraint of all of his passions. Jesus lived like this. Think about that. The uncreated God, he, didn't, he, he lived in restraint of power. He lived in meekness. He, had, he didn't have the same battle, but he lived in meekness. Think about that. He could have done anything he wanted, but he didn't. He lived in obedience to the Father. He's looking for equally yoked brides. And, and Matthew 11, our equally yoked bride, in Matthew 11 it says that his yoke is meekness and lowliness. That is not passivity. Have you ever tried to be meek? I'm not talking about personality type here. You know, my sister was always kind of quiet and good, and I was not. <laughs> I was loud and uh, in, in everybody's face all the time and kind of always in trouble. I'm not talking about a personality type. I'm talking about what God esteems. For the eyes of the Lord are looking to and fro throughout the earth, looking for men and women who live from the inside out. Live like you're not of this world because you're not. And in a minute, it's going to be seen. And when it's seen, what's on the inside will be expressed on the outside. You know, the gold, like I was saying, the gold and the garments, all that is an expression of what's going on inside of your heart. It's a public display of affection, so to speak. It's all the garments, the garments that you're wearing, in the age to come, they have, do you know there's different levels of garments? It's not like we're all just walking around in a white t-shirt and all look the same. And, you know, you, have you ever thought about heaven? Because as Mike says, if you don't think rightly of heaven, you're not going to think of heaven at all. We're really going somewhere. And what you're doing inside of your heart counts. And it's the only thing that remains. It's the only thing 
that remains. I want to live as a woman that the world is not worthy of. I want to live untouchable, so to speak. I want to live untouchable. I want to live like you can't get to me. I mean, what, what can you do to a man or a woman who's living the Sermon on the Mount? You can't persecute them. You can't steal from them. I mean, you can, but if they're truly embracing love, it doesn't affect you. I want to live like this. I want to give God what he's looking for. I want to be caught up in his inheritance in me. You know, he's the one that created it. Like I was saying at the beginning, I want to stand before him in that day with my offering of my heart and say, here, I did it. Here's my heart. It's on fire. It's on fire. My heart is on fire. I really love you. I really did it. Not for a summertime, not for three months. I did it for decades. I did it for decades and decades and decades. Yes, I stumbled. I stumbled many, many times, but I didn't give in to shame. I didn't give in to condemnation. I didn't give in to guilt. I didn't give in to the voice of the accuser who said, you're a hopeless hypocrite. You'll never get it right. You don't love God. I didn't yield. I knew who I was. I knew where I was going. I came from love. I lived for love and I'm going to love and I fought the good fight from the inside out I took that energy and I turned it inside for the war that's on the inside is the arena to demonstrate love I demonstrate love here I am God here's my offering here's your inheritance here's your prize here's your reward I love you I loved you I loved you in my weakness I loved you in my failure I got up again and again and again and again and again I didn't quit I didn't give in. I didn't yield. Even whenever I stumbled for those times when I yielded to my flesh, I hated it, God. You know I hated it. And I repented and I said, God, that's not who I am. That's not who I am. I am not like an animal given to the lust of the flesh. This is not who I am. I said, no, I am a lover of God. I hit delete. I repented and I moved on. I did it for decade after decade after decade. I didn't give in to bitterness. I didn't let a root of bitterness and offense get in my heart, not to those who hurt me from my childhood, not from those who hurt me in my teen years, not from those who hurt me when I was an adult and they did it wrong to me. I forgave them. There's no bitterness in me. There's no bitterness in me. I loved you. I did it. Not because I loved them. I did it because I love you. I love you, God. I love you and I want a heart that flows like a river. There's no bitterness here. I want to say I didn't give in to covetousness. I didn't give in to the desire for wealth and fame and all the, the pomp of humanity. I didn't yield. I didn't lose my vision. I didn't lose the goal. I didn't lose the aim. I ran the race. Paul the Apostle said we're in a race. We're in a race and I want to run the race to win the prize I don't want to run the race and end up at the back I want to run the race to win the prize we're not running against each other we're running against ourselves it's that war on the inside it's the spirit and righteous it's the spirit in the flesh going at it that's the race and I want to win I want to win because he's worth it he's worth it he's worth it he's beautiful he's worthy and in just a minute you're gonna see him in just a minute all oh, your unbelief I know we struggle with unbelief I go I don't even I, when I was your age I was like I don't know if I even believe in God I struggled with unbelief but I said no I know the truth I will live by faith I will live by faith not by sight in just a minute you're gonna see him and he is beautiful he's worthy you're gonna look at him the most humble man that ever lived the most joyful man who ever Ever lived in Psalm 45 it said that he hated righteousness I mean he hated wickedness and loved righteousness and it said therefore he had the oil of gladness more than all of his companions can you imagine how happy Jesus is the whole wide world is looking to for the key to happiness but nobody wants to hate wickedness and love righteousness that's the key to happiness that's the key to love. That's the key to life. It's the Sermon on the Mount lifestyle because he's the creator. Righteousness means it's right. You know, if the pot doesn't become a vase or whatever the, whatever the potter's trying to make it into, it's distorted. That's not righteous. It's distorted. When we live in sin, when we live according to our flesh, we're distorted. <laughs> 
We want to be made into the image of what he's trying to make us into, which is love. I want this to be the testimony that I have at the end of the day.